Okay, everybody. Third try. This is Philip Martin. This is uh, on film for November 5th, 2021. We are, what, 19, 20 months into this, you know, uh, now. And it feels weird, but it feels like movies actually are starting to come back into theaters and people are really going to see them. Uh, Dune is doing very well, even though you can also watch it on your television, which says something. It says something that there's enough people who are discerning enough to go out and see this thing. And also, I think it says something about our pent-up desire to get out. And this was an occasion that we could use to go. So, so good on us. I mean, as long as, um, you know, I don't know how. I think this... I'll tell you the truth. I think this is going to be the way it is. I don't think we're going to ever get back to uh, like it was pre-March uh, 2020. We're never going to have that sort of environment again because we never do, because things always change. Things are always constantly changing. So it's really not that big a deal now that we're if we know how to, to deal with it, we know how to stay safe, we know how to, you know, treat this stuff, we know how to get our shots and, you know, not expose, you know, fragile people and things like that. I think we will be able to go forward, but I don't think it's ever going to be the same again. We're going to have another one of these and then another one of these and then another one of these. And they're going to vary in um, intensity. But... It's like the flu. We're going to have the flu every year. We're also going to have this every year now. Now, whether it's deadly again, I don't know. But we're going to have to make accommodations. We're going to have to decide how we're going to deal with this stuff. And one of the ways we're going to decide how to deal with this stuff is we're going to pick and choose what we're willing to, you know, go see in the theaters. <laughs> Which is sad, but it's not any sadder than what's been going on. I mean, it's sort of like we've always had this ex existential threat to, you know, movie theaters. There's, since my whole life, I mean, television was going to kill it. And, you know, the cable television was going to kill it. And movies on TV were going to kill it. And they hasn't killed it. It's sort of like the newspaper industry. We're still around. Now, I'm not saying that either one of those things is a given and it's going to stay forever. Um, I don't think they are. I think eventually you will have something else evolve and we'll have a different type of, um, of world. But newspapers have been dying since the day I got into newspapering 40 years ago. Theaters have been dying a lot longer than that. And you can see that if you live in a small town and you, you know, have an old downtown, you have an old boarded up movie theater. You know, or you go out to the mall sometime and there's a boarded up movie theater. There's not everybody's going to going to make it. And I think that what we're going to do is we're going to have fewer and fewer opportunities to go to the theater because we're going to have more and more opportunities to watch it on some sort of platform neutral uh, device on a screen somewhere that you're carrying or that you have in your house, you know. That's just the way it is, regardless of COVID, regardless of whatever, you know, is, is happening in the environment. There's always going to be this pressure on movie theaters to be something special, to bring people in there, because you need something more than just a story told in lights and sound on a wall, because we can get that anywhere. But it's encouraging that things like Dune are doing well and that people are going out. I think part of it is we really want to see each other. We really want to be in these spaces together. And we will take any excuse we can get for it. Now, I want to leave aside the wisdom of it. I think that's one of the things that human beings long for. And I think we can cocoon ourselves for so long and maybe we can cocoon ourselves to the point that we don't really crave this anymore or we forget what it feels like. But when you do go to the theater 
to, you know, a concert or even just out to eat and you have a great time and you see people and you remember that, you remember the community and you, you know, then you realize how much you miss it. Um, so we're coming into the, the, you know, the holiday season. This is the end of the year. This is the, this is the time of year when I start to get, you know, screeners, uh, for your consideration screeners, uh, the big movies that big Oscar seeking movies start working their way onto the screen. You know, um, looks like the Eternals is not all that great, but you know, that's just what I read. Uh, but you know, we got Belfast coming up. We've got, uh, the Ethan Cohen, I think it's Ethan, Ethan Cohen's, uh, Macbeth movie. We've got a lot of stuff that I look forward to that, uh, will be out over the next, you know, month and a half, uh, between now and Christmas. And then since we're in Arkansas, uh, we actually get good movies in January and into February because the ones that don't open here do open here eventually. So. And we got a lot. This is the the meat of the year. And it's going to be interesting to see this because it's felt like, even though I wouldn't say this is the greatest movie year ever, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to really think of something other than The French Dispatch, which I'm not, which I write about Sunday, um, really blowing me away. I mean... I've seen some good films. I've seen plenty of good films. Uh, this is not a war story. Is a film I saw that uh, Karen was doing. Uh, she does this. She was she was during a panel for the um, Tallgrass uh, Film Festival in Wichita, and uh, we watched several movies uh, that she had to like make decisions about, and it won. And uh, this is not a war story. Is a very good film, and I hope that it gets some sort of theatrical release. But a lot of these things don't. You think about this. I mean, sort of like um, something interesting I just got um, in the mail. Uh, Lee Isaac Chung. You remember Lee Isaac Chung, the guy from Arkansas, Korean descent from Arkansas, grew up in Arkansas. Uh, Minari was his film last year. About this time, I guess was when it was coming out. And everybody loves Minari, and Minari was, it, is a really great film. Now, I knew about Lee Isaac Chung because years ago, I mean like 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that. How, what's the date on this? That says 2021. That's not true. Uh, 2006. Okay. Uh, this movie. Uh, yeah, there you go. Munyurangabo. Munyurangabo. I don't know how you say it. Mun, Munyurangabo. Anyway, we wrote about this. We, this is a really great film. It's uh, really low budget. He did it as a student project in Rwanda. And, um, you know, it, it actually had a plane here. We had a, we, they showed it here in Arkansas. Uh, it was picked up by Film Movement. It's a, it's a great little movie. It's a great little movie. Anyway, so what did he do in the interim between making that movie and making Minari, which is this, you know, art house hit? Uh, I mean, I, I imagine the next movie that Lee Isaac Chung knows does, you will know everything about. You will, you know, hear about it as it's being made and stuff like that. Well, he made two films. He actually made three. He made a documentary, too, that I haven't seen. And... They're both really interesting films, <laughs> but they're very small. God, this was uh, Amanda Harm, Abigail Harm, Abigail. It stars Amanda Plummer, and it's based on a Korean, you know, fairy tale. And it's just this really, it, it, you would see aspects of Benari in it because it's very slight feeling but it has this emotive component to it that's that's um, really nice. I mean, it's uh, Amanda Plummer plays a plays plays a woman who reads to the blind on the outskirts of a Korean city, and it's uh, it's a nice nice film. I haven't seen Lucky Life. That's the other one. This, see, I didn't even know you could. Well, you couldn't. This is this has just been. These have just come out from. Um, 
Film Movement, which is a outfit that I've written about for 20 years or since they started. And it used to be that Film Movement would send you the DVDs in the mail, okay? But uh, I, I haven't watched Lucky Live. I have seen Abigail Harm uh, a few years ago. Um, I, at the time, I don't even think I put it together with Lee Isaac Chung, who had done the other film and he did Minari. Um, Lucky Life, I don't know much about. It's um, based on a poem by Gerard, um, Gerald Stern. And um, we'll, we'll watch it. We will watch this before I move this along. Um, but it's nice they package these together. Film movement package these together, and now they're out. And you can, you know, buy them. And um, apparently, Chung was on the really on the verge of quitting filmmaking, like a few years ago in 2018 or so, after he'd made all these films. <laughs> And they hadn't gone anywhere, and they hadn't done anything. And I imagine that uh, the film I was talking about, um, This Is Not a War Story, is probably going to have the same sort of fate as these films. Now, there's an... I don't want to say an overt artiness about this, but there are serious films. There are films that are uh, much about filmmaking as they are about telling the story that, this, that he wants to tell. They are not dumbed down and made accessible for a popular audience. Nor was Minari, by the way. It's just that it happened to connect. But Chung made a decision. I read this in The Guardian a few years ago, or a year ago or so. Uh, uh, apparently, he just decided he would give it one more shot, and he would try to make a movie for his friends back in Arkansas. And the result was Minari. And I'm not saying Minari's a much better film than these films, because... For one thing, that just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, sort of like uh, commercial success and popular acceptance is not equivalent to artistic success. And they're not mutually exclusive either. So you can make a movie that's just as good as Minari and have nobody see it, and that's fine. I mean, maybe not for your pocketbook, maybe not for what you're trying to do, but you know... There are artists who do work for work's sake and aren't necessarily, you know, worried about whether they're going to sell millions of copies or, or you know, win Oscars or stuff like that. These, these are, this is really good, honest work, you know. This is good stuff. But made a decision that he was going to try to make more of a story-based film, more of something that is... Well, slightly more conventional, slightly more accessible, and the result was Minari. And I don't know how Minari did at the box office, to be honest. I'm sure that with the attention it got, it probably made a little money. Everybody, you know, got paid. You know, I don't think anybody went broke on it. Um, but it's also hard for me to judge these things because, you know, box office is so funny. And and it's it's a weird thing. It's like I would never have. We, we don't. And it, we have a box office column in our paper every week, and I understand why we have that. That's like having the box scores for baseball or something, because some people really care about that. But I'm not sure that it really belongs in our section, which is a review-driven section, and we. It's a bunch of people who write about movies, who write about what movies mean and what they can mean and how they how they work and things like that. And we really don't have much interest in two things. We don't have much interest in how well the movie does at the box office. We don't have much interest in the lives and um, foibles of celebrities who make movies. I mean, I'm really not interested in, you know, Brad Pitt's love life. Um, I am interested in the work that Brad Pitt does. And I mean, if you think about it, we're perfectly well situated someplace like Arkansas to report on the movies that show up in Arkansas because we can watch those movies, we can look at them, we can break them down, we can talk about what they mean and how they are accomplished and how the people who work on them work on them where we're not really equipped to do the, the, the Entertainment Weekly, you know, TMZ sort of gossip work. And so 
we've never done it. I mean, it's sort of like we do do interviews with people and sometimes we'll, you know, you talk to people, you ask them questions. And sometimes those questions, you know, have to do with things other than the work, but mainly we're interested in the work. And um, box office has an effect on the work, just like Oscars have an effect on the work. I mean, if you make a movie that makes a lot of money, you're going to get a chance to make another movie. If you make a movie that wins an Oscar, you're going to be able to make another movie and you're going to be able to raise your price and charge more. And it has an effect. It's not something that we can live. I mean, we can't be pure about this stuff and say we don't care about that. We don't care about this. I'm just saying our emphasis is mostly on what is on the screen. That's in the, that is, is in the, what's in the frame, which makes it easy for us because we don't have to go and chase some of the things that maybe some other people might chase. Anyway, I, I would invite you if you're, you know, if you're interested in Mr. Chung, and you should be. I mean, he's a fellow Arkansan, basically. I mean, um, you should look these uh, DVDs up. I don't know that you can go down to uh, Best Buy and get them, but um, the street date is November 9th, and you can get all three of them for forty four ninety five. dollars A film movement is the... Is the um, company and like I said I remember when they used to send out their DVDs like in envelopes every you know every month, you get one a month it was a subscription service it was really cool and they have morphed into a more general um, distribution DVD distribution um, outfit sort of like a baby criterion or you know uh, something like that and they specialize in foreign and art films and they're good to have along I really we really try to write about their their product in our section. We don't always because we don't always write about everybody. But anyway, that's that's my tip for the week. You can get all three of these movies for forty five bucks. Which is fifteen bucks each, which you know doesn't sound like that big a deal, but <laughs> you Yeah, it's interesting. Our Kansas filmmaker, Lee Isaac Chung. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about this section. Lordy. <laughs> this has been a bear of a week. It's been a bear of a week because, uh, and this is very inside baseball, so you can turn this off if you're not interested in inside baseball stuff. Because the inside baseball stuff is all the studios now, most of them, have decided that they're going to do their publicity in different ways. Which means, rather than going to a central uh, place like EPK dot, uh, TV and downloading a press kit and downloading, the, now you have to search and search out publicists and find stuff. And uh, I've been trying to find photos that we can use. I mean, we can find the photos, but we have to find photos that we can actually use. Um, and it's just been a bear of a week. So if you're a publicist out there and you want to send me like a list of places where I can go and get these things, that would be really nice. But, you know, EPK TV is still around, but we lost this thing called ImageNet, so we don't have them. Um, and that's where Disney and Universal and other people are. Warner Brothers does their own stuff. Uh, Netflix does their own stuff, except sometimes... <laughs> and our email is kicking back messages from our email from Netflix somehow because I think they're a bad actor. <laughs> it's all a mess. It's just been really bad. It's been so bad that um, I'm not going to I'm, I'm, I'm not going to Bentonville today. <laughs> I was going to go up to Bentonville and go to Crystal Bridges and, and and work from there on Thursday, but no, I'm staying here because it's just been. <laughs> That week. But anyway, uh, it'll be a good week of the movies. I mean, the, the other thing that's coming this week is Red Notice, which is the biggest uh, Netflix production ever. And it's opening theatrically. It's opening theatrically here. And then it'll go to Netflix in a week or two. Um, Passing is also opening next week on Netflix. What else have we got? That's really... The Eternals kind of ran everything out of the theaters this week. So... 
which is kind of typical. Anyway, we're into the holiday season. We're going to have a lot of good stuff. We're going to have a lot of um, screeners. We're going to be very busy. We're going to be very happy. And we will see you next week.